So with the story fully in place, uh, it's quite interesting to talk about the endings and where my mind was when I was writing it. And obviously none of it was planned, as I said before, so it was all kind of free-flowing. So it's kind of interesting to explain where my thought processes were and what all of this really meant. So one of the first endings that was kind of planned out was the suicide ending. Um, so the suicide ending is where basically you've been a really nice guy to Alex for pretty much most of the story and then at the very last minute just say no I'm not helping you so it was almost one of those where it's like if you're doing a dick move to Alex then Alex is going to do a dick move to you so essentially she shoots herself to say okay if that's what you want to do this is how we'll play it so it was one of those endings where it's like you know if you aren't going to play nice neither is Alex so with that everybody the police the DEA, everyone comes up to the actual apartment to see what's going on, and they realise that she's not actually dead. Uh, the Black Diablos basically gets dismembered and dissected, and everyone goes to jail. And Nathan has to go on the run because he's been impl implicated in it. The next one um, is called Cut the Air Supply. Now, this is the official canon ending for the whole game. So, in this ending, what happens is, is that Alex is told to stay where she is in the apartment whilst Nathan slash James goes and kills the gang entirely. In this particular ending, she's not quite the level that she's at in All and Sundry, so she's trying to understand what she is. She's not fully formed, so she can only appear at short bursts at a time. And what happens is after the Jay kills everybody, is that Alex has to go on the run with him because she, she can never go back to any kind of life she's had before. She also aborts the child on her own whim and after a while of them being together the two have a baby of their own which reflects what happens in the Viola Bonneville tapes which will be explained later on. There's three endings which are intertwined with one another and these all kind of revolve around the bomb that Tommy has that's essentially all about trying to stop a guy called Prescott who's a, a government official that's been doing drug deals and he also has a stake in Athena Pharmaceuticals which is um, part of Dolos and everything else with that. So what happens here is that there's three ways you can go about it. There's the wrong wire ending, which is the worst ending out of the bunch, vaporized, which is the worst ending for Alex, and the woman scorned ending, which is the best ending for Alex, but the worst for Nathan slash James. So what happens in woman scorned is, is that the bomb gets disarmed, Alex gets hold of this bomb and decides, I'm going to take over the gang. So she goes fully Harley Quinn, so the whole inspiration for this ending is the fact that she is like Harley Quinn and she just doesn't want to take any of the abuse that she's suffered anymore. So she goes about killing Tommy, she takes over the gang, uses her DAA training, and she becomes a force to be reckoned with. So this is a great ending for Alex, but there's that whole aspect that it's all about perspective, and Nathan has to change this whole idea that she's not who she said she was. And the two care enough because Alex leaves Nathan alone to keep doing his job in the apartment, but the two never ever talk to one another and they leave each other alone. It's a sad ending, but essentially Alex gets what she wants, even though it's pretty evil. The next ending is called Wrong Wire. Now, Wrong Wire is when Alex tries to disarm the bomb, but what happens is she actually gets it completely wrong and she blows up everything and infects herself and Nathan slash James. Um, so what happens is, is that they both end up dying in a horrible way. It was gonna be expanded more this ending where they go off in a car to try and escape everything and find a hospital that's way, way far away. But sadly, it just didn't have enough time to kind of put that together, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, it basically, it's a horrible ending where Nathan has to shoot Alex and then he shoots himself so they don't have to suffer. The vaporized ending is essentially where Alex absolutely blows herself up but doesn't actually cause any of the infection problems. So this stops the gang, it stops Alex, it stops the drug dealing but it, it just causes everything to go wrong and Nathan has to start a new life for himself. So it's not as bad as the wrong wire ending, but it's still pretty bad. The other ending is called Not Doing This, which is basically the player putting the phone down and having nothing else to do with the game, which is the worst ending, and it's almost kind of saying, why did you bother in the first place? <laughs> 
finally, there is the most barbaric ending out of the lot, which is called The Personal Touch. So in this ending, uh, Alex gets shot by Tommy, and Nathan doesn't realise what's going off until the very last minute. And he goes across to the street and across to the apartment, and then physically dissects Tommy like like a cleaner of old. So basically, he just becomes his old self and kills him in the most barbaric way possible. And this is quite possibly one of the hardest endings to get to, but it rewards you accordingly because it's quite violent. And those are the endings. So there's not as many as there was in Monitor originally, and you don't have to find any kind of items in the actual room to get to it. It's all purely do done through conversations. So it's kind of different in that way, but hopefully people can find them in very interesting ways. <laughs>